Good morning. There's Jerry. Actually, I'm here as Donna today on my name tag. I'm supposed to be hosting a meeting, but I was joining the wrong meeting, so that's why I was late. <clears throat> Ron, I see your picture. Are you on? Yep, I'm here. I'm just uh, moving things around on the desk. <clears throat> oh. So I'll show myself when I get my desk organized. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Going to be a very Otherwise loose... you'll see you'll see what looks like uh, I'm being thrown upside down and stuff. Ah, uh, yes, that happens sometimes. Moving cameras present a weird image. Yeah. Also, Hello, guys. People dizzy. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Michael John. <laughs> Donna Fong, you've changed. <laughs> yeah, Donna's out today, so she asked me to fill in today. Yeah. Uh, just to host the meeting, just to all that fun uh, stuff. I'm trying to see if she posted an agenda for this or if we just go off of memory. Yeah. There's the email. There's the agenda. Yeah. Okay, good. Found it. Yeah. Okay, people, a few more minutes to join in. Yeah. To you when you want us to start, I can go through the agenda. I'm going to show um, what you want to wait. What time do we have? We have nine nine oh five. I think that's the uh, uh, an appropriate flinch factor in Toastmasters. We start at at the on the hour one not one second more. <laughs> and, 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 okay. And the goal is to start right away and not end late, whatever that means. But you got to set up here, so. Okay, can you see my screen with the agenda on it? If I put some glasses on, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just go through her agenda here. So for our net control operators, we did good for January, February. We still need one person for the end of February. Is anybody available for that that's on this call? Our net control on Thursday the 23rd. Does anyone want to sign up for March? Okay, and then I will reach out to the people later and see if we can fill in the slots. Um, hopefully you got the email about the dues being waived for this year for our current and former ARCA members. So we're gonna waive the dues that was a decision by the board. It also applies to any CERT members that want to join ARCA as well, just to get them in the door and get their feet wet, get them interested in the program and what else besides CERT can ham radio provide, and that's where ARCA comes in to show all the other aspects of ham radio, what's out there and what's available. Um, can we do have can the I make a quick sure. comment on that? I was at that board meeting when we decided that, and we decided that our treasury is strong enough 
that we don't need membership dues this year in order to survive. So we thought we would, uh, we, we, you could say we have a budget surplus. All right. And I like to be a president who, who over, oversees a budget surplus. You know, presidents love to say, yeah, Clinton ended on a budget surplus. Whatever you think about him, he at least accomplished that. So we're hoping that that'll bring in people that might have been reluctant to join because for some people, 20 bucks is a lot of money. Yep, that's true. Any other comments on that? <clears throat> okay. We also have the annual elections coming up. Um, you got an email about that. And currently we have the offices of president, vice president, secretary, and treasury that need to be voted on. Ron has agreed to put his name forward to be president again, if we still vote on him. The vice president, there's no one listed for the vice president at this time. The secretary, Donna has been doing a great job as secretary. Uh, she, due to other family issues, she will not be able to continue in that role. So we are looking for a new secretary for this year. Uh, treasurer Dan said he is still willing to be treasurer if anyone wants to oppose him, put your name forward. Um, we, uh, in the email, it talks about when she would like to have that information so she can make fill out the ballots well, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Donna directly. Uh, we will have a presentation by Jim. And there was a question that we had at the board meeting, is ARCA a nonprofit, tech, a legally nonprofit? We get some discounts if we are a legal nonprofit. We can find any records that we are. So if anyone knows that we are officially, let us know. We can find any records that said that we were an official. Theoretically, non I would say we're a nonprofit, but we don't have a 501c3 tax exempt status. Yeah, that's we the way I think I understand that. Yeah, that's what we. That's all we could find was that we are not a 513c <clears throat> government assigned nonprofit organization kind of thing that would give us credit for these kind of situations. Absolutely. So yes, we are not. My recollection is is that in fact we were a nonprofit. This was set up uh, quite a while ago. There was discussion of it, I don't know, six, eight, six seven years ago. And, uh, but I don't know if there's any record of it anymore because it, records probably went with whoever had set that up in there originally. So I don't know well, if it's been maintained and I don't know what that means. That, uh, an important point here is um, um, don't we have to renew? In my Toastmasters club, somebody forgot to renew our nonprofit status with the IRS. So technically, my Toastmasters club until next month is is not a nonprofit. So it sounds like you have to renew something every year or two years. And I don't know that we've ever done five hundred one c three status. Yeah. Say that again. Well, okay. that that's my thought. At any rate, yeah, yeah. That so maybe we <laughs> need to renew something. So if it's something we want to look into, the board can look into either renewing or creating that. But I know there's some. Like you said, yeah. there's some logistics and some stuff you have to do to keep that going. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, so the next thing on the agenda would be Jim Wright's battery test results from the repeater. Jim, do you want to share the screen? You sent the deck. Are you going to share? Or do you want me to just uh, step through it? Uh, no. One, I'll I'll share the screen and I'll walk okay. through it. So let me share the screen here. Okay. okay so. You have disabled participant screen sharing. I did. Let's see here. I thought I enabled it. <clears throat> Somebody has a TV on in the background that's very distracting. Okay, I think I said it for multiple people to see mine now, but it says multiple people can share. Yeah. It says multiple okay. participants can share. Okay, so let me try it now. Okay. I asked Donna if I needed to do anything special. She said no. Okay, so can you see it, my screen? No, I can't. Okay, so I I did the share at my end, and uh, 
I don't. So, so, so how does Zoom know which <laughs> of the shared screens to flip yeah. between? Two, two <laughs> things have to happen. One, you have, okay. it has to be enabled by the host to be able to share a participant screen. And two, the participant needs to click on the share button. I, right. I've changed, I made it just made a change. Going to try it now. Okay. So. Uh, that looks better. You see me now? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so let me go through this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because uh, we did do a presentation about the repeater uh, a month or two ago, but I do want to just review a few of the battery basics. We went, did go up and we did measure the capacity. Uh, Donna and uh, I don't know, a couple of us went up and did that. And uh, the overall capacity is 21.4 amp hours. Now, the real question is, uh, it's an 80 amp hour capacity battery. We have about 25% of that available now. Uh, it's been four, four years and a bit. So what does that mean? And that's what the presentation is about. So I'll walk through that. It's not really complicated, although maybe it looks a little complicated. But the key thing is you have to have a scenario of what you're going to do after the power goes out in an emergency. And your protocols around that will determine whether the 21.4 amp hours is enough or if we need to replace the battery. And I'll do a sample scenario and walk through that and make a recommendation. Okay, so the batteries in the bottom of the K6 QLF lower <laughs> cabinet bay up on top of uh, the old wing of the hospital. It's an 80 amp our AGM battery. The battery we have is a Lifeline GPL25T. We prefer that because it's a sealed AGM deep cycle lead acid battery. It's 12 volts, 80 amp hour. And importantly, it meets Coast Guard and mil spec standards for its reserve and life cycle capabilities. So it's very stable and robust. I'm often asked about uh, LiPo batteries and you don't want to use them up there. You got lots of capacity, but if they freeze, they're toast. So they're not really good for us, even though we don't often freeze. Just takes once and it's done. Battery maintenance basics. The important thing about the, these batteries, in fact, uh, AGM batteries and lead acid batteries in general, is they lose capacity with age. So you need to check the capacity on a regular schedule. Lifeline suggests replacing the, the GPL 25T every four years. And uh, my personal recommendation is you start testing the battery after four years and then every year thereafter. The current battery is a little over four years old. The original GPL 25T that I replaced had only 12.4 amp hours. I'm not sure how many years that was because I'm dealing with oral history. And I, I'm, I'm just not sure that I'm clear on that. You should replace the battery when the capacity is inadequate for the runtime required after the loss of power based on what your requirements are. And that basically is key. One of the requirements is you need time for a cutover to the K6QLF repeater, which is in the EOC and has a, a fuel bunker and an emergency power, or the portable repeater, which could be used in an MDU or, or something else that has a generator. So battery capacity test setup. We went through this last time. Key thing is you present a load and it's, it's straightforward to do with this setup that is equal to the amount of power required to run the radio while it's transmitting. And so it turns out that an inverter with a 60 watt bulb as the AC load has almost exactly 5.8 amps, which is what the repeater needs to transmit. And if you put a PowerWorks DC line uh, power analyzer in line with the battery, it'll record how much power, how many amp hours of power the battery's delivered and the inverter will automatically turn off at 10.5 uh, volts, which is the, the actually is the uh, voltage cutoff required to do a, a legitimate normal test. So that will match the figures that the manufacturer has. 
uh, at, under that load. Now, I'm not going to go through that test procedure. We did that together up there. Uh, you do need to remember once you have recorded this and uh, the number of amp hours you've used to recharge your backup battery because it's no good until you recharge it. You, you drained it below its useful limit. So that just takes an AGM charger. Now, finding what the battery runtime is, you measure battery capacity in amp hours, you determine the draw of the, which I measured, of the GR1225 repeater under producing eight watts. So that's 5.8 amps. I, the specs tell you that it takes 1.5 amp uh, low, it does, pre presents a 1.5 amp load when you're listening. So those are the two key figures you need to figure out how much power you need for any scenario you have. The relationship is that the 1.5 amps times the number of hours listening plus the 5.8 amps plus times the number of hours you're actually repeating will give you the measured capacity. You scale that by 0.8 because I have for battery protection and for radio protection, I have an automatic battery cutoff, which means you can't run the battery all the way down, destroying the battery and uh, possibly the radio electronics. So that's just a safety factor. So uh, the important key thing I want to highlight here is you need to have a response scenario before you can say how much power you need. And so let's walk through one just to get a feel for what that looks like. A bad, a typical bad scenario for us might be a 7.0 earthquake on say the Hayward Fault with an immediate power loss because it's in the old uh, hospital wing and presumably that's not as robust. We know that we have 21.4 amp hours of battery capacity if this happened today. And what do we think is going to be needed for? Well, I set up an activity timeline. I'm assuming in the first two hours, uh, you'll be doing cert check-ins and organization. And that that will take a listening time of, there would be a lot of traffic because people will be checking in and there'll be initial uh, or discussion of organization. So listening time would be maybe 25% repeating time 75%. Uh, second two hours after that, the CERT team deployments would probably start. I'm basing this on a 2013 exercise we did uh, out, out at the shopping center on Bay Farm and uh, roughly what happened there. So the CERT team deployments would happen during the second two hours. And that, and they'll be moving around and uh, getting in position, doing things like that. The listening time will be 50%. There'll be repeating time 50% when they're providing hopefully brief reports on the status. And uh, then the, the final sort of steady state is team coordination for the that initial period. And uh, that means any additional hours, I assume the listening time would be 75% most of the time. And the repeating time would be 25% more for status. Now, that's a simple model. You make any model you want, but that gives us something to look at and see how we get a result. So you set up an energy budget table. That's the easy way to use these numbers. And you can just make a spreadsheet. The key things are, first of all, how much power do we actually have available? It's 21.4 amp hours as measured at a cutoff of 10.5 volts. We're cutting it off at 11.7, which that provides protection for the battery and protection for the radio. That means that you only have 80% of the full load available. So you get 17.12 total amp hours that you have to before you have to cut over to another repeater with a, a power source. Hours one and two, We've already said that it's a quarter of the time it's going to be, you're going to be listening, three quarters of the time somebody's going to be talking. So you just generate that number from that. And we put that in our chart, hourly 
uh, listening amp hours for one hour. Hours three and four, you go through, we, we assume it's 50-50 split listening and repeating. And so using 50%, we run it through the formula and we get the number of amp hours used for that hour uh, listening and the number of amp hours for repeating. That'd be hour three and four. And then we're assuming at the fifth hour and beyond, three quarters of the time you're listening, quarter of the time you're talking. That gives you listening amp hour of 1.125 and a repeating amp hour of 1.45. And so we just gives us an hourly total for each of the hours that we're operating under the load conditions we're assuming based on the scenario. And then you do a cumulative of that. Now we only have 17.12 amp hours and we notice that we're still good at the end of four hours, but we won't make it through the fifth hour. We'll run out of power. So this says, if this scenario is the appropriate one, at 21.4 amp hours that I measured, I'm gonna be out of power after the fourth hour. And we need to cut over to either the hospital, either to the uh, the um, EOC, who has you know emergency power and a bunker, fuel bunker, or to the portable repeater and, and an MDU that say has a generator. And so you need to have in your scenario and in your plan a cutover protocol because you're going to need to announce that your repeater will be uh, cutting over, will lose power, will stop. And at that point, people can expect that one of the other sources of radio will come up. And you need to alert the folks in either the EOC or an MDU that they need to be on hand when the power fails to so cut over uh, promptly. And so you can continue your, pro your process. Is, is that clear? It's, it's not complicated, but there's a little bit of math. Yeah, I have a question. So this is assuming yeah. the building is still standing. It's just the power is out. The building's safe to work. The reader Peter's up there, antenna's up there. Well, I mean, the building could, yeah, the, the, that, that assumes that the, the building's still standing. Okay. If the building falls down completely, it's moot because you want to go to immediately to the EOC or go to a... Right. So, to a, so a, as long as the building's standing, do you see any downside to us bringing a portable generator up there, placing it outside and running an extension cord through the door? And down to the repeater itself. Is there a downside that you've recognized already? I I think that's a perfectly assuming you can get access, and I'm I'm assuming that in an emergency, if they red tag the building, there may be a problem going in. Yeah. But otherwise, you should be able to use uh, another power source, for example, a, a generator, take it up and run it that way. That would work fine. Okay. So we have a multiplicity of ways of responding key thing from my standpoint is we always have a way to respond and keep things going. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I hadn't thought about red tagging it. Yeah. The building could be up, but they may not let us in to do anything. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. And that might well, be squishy if, 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 if they're being generous to us, but I, I don't know. We, I don't know how to predict that. Yes. Yeah. So am I, am I hearing you say that word we, the, the battery is just starting to move into being needing to be replaced mode. Yeah, actually, if we go down, uh, that's the question. Do we replace the battery? So in this scenario, the current 21.4 amp hours battery capacity will functionally last four hours, given our assumptions. The handoff to either the OC or the portable repeater should be arranged before battery power is lost. There should be a protocol. And the people who are going to pick up the, you know, the baton need to be paying attention and listening. A new 80 H hour battery would last in this scenario, 22 hours. I think that would be better overall because we get the best repeating up on top of the hospital. That's where we actually get the best reception and the most and the broadest range of uh, coverage. So there is, there, is a, there is a plus to having more rather than less time up on the hospital. So I think the battery should be replaced. I, you could use it, you just have to understand you only get a couple hours, or you can replace it and you have a much more generous margin with, uh, you know, on the best location in Alameda for a repeater. 
I so, totally yeah. support replacing <laughs> it. It uh, we can certainly afford it. Yeah. So, how much do these batteries cost? Well, <laughs> I did an extensive survey when I replaced the last one. You can get them online uh, through Amazon, for that matter, and uh, the cost to or cost is like two forty to two eighty. And this is like four years ago, of course, before the pandemic. So uh, the big thing was that shipping is very high on a battery. They weigh a lot. These things weigh, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds, probably about 50 pounds. And uh, so that's very expensive. There is a place that I believe was called Monument uh, Battery in San Leandro, though, that would sell me one for 280 which, and, and there would be no shipping charge. I could have matched that online, but also those guys stand behind their batteries. So, and if you take in an old battery, they'll give you some credit towards the lead in the battery. It was 20 bucks in that case. So overall, that was the better deal. And so I'd, I'd recommend buying one there if they're still open. Otherwise, some other local supplier who will give you about the online price for the battery. And uh, so it's, it was 280 then. Now I don't know. It's more. Sounds sounds like a worthwhile investment, and uh, our treasury can certainly afford it. So uh, I think somebody should take charge and 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 go ahead and get the battery and replace it. I'm happy to go up if they want to. Uh, you know, walk in on the battery installation. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm sort of trying to decouple here. So uh, we, when they get the battery, I'll be happy to go up. We'll walk through the, you know, the the swap over, which is easy, but it helps to see it once, and uh, we should be, you know, good to go. Could uh, uh, could you send a message to the ARCA mailing list uh, saying that you would you're looking for a volunteer to get us the battery and 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 blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, I could, but probably that should come from you because I'm really trying to kind of cut over on this and, and do a handoff. Well, I, can talk to, I can talk to Don really about that. To help out. I'll, I'll talk Sorry? to Don about that. We'll get it taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So that, that, that was the thing. And uh, replicating that procedure will tell you four years from now if your battery's good or not. So. Well, thank you, Jim. Would you recommend two batteries in parallel to have double mm. the power? Or do we not have space? Uh, I think you can get two batteries in there. The The only real cost is it, it's just easier to do the, all the stuff with just one battery in there. Okay. And people typically use one battery. So that is a choice you can make. Um, it, batteries in parallel, unless they're matched, tend to be less efficient for the total amount. So you don't actually quite double the amount of power you get, but you know, you'd get more power. Okay. And uh, okay. so you, you can choose what the best thing you still have to are gonna have to replace it in in four or five years, depending on whatever your, your criterion is. So it, it might be a little more expensive to do it that way, but it's a perfectly valid way to go. Would a hundred amp hour be better? <laughs> Yeah, and the reason we went with the 80 amp hour is because this one's certified by the Coast Guard. You get more, <laughs> it's thoroughly documented enough to get through their, their certification process. And the no-name batteries you get for cheap online, you get no, you don't know what you're getting really. Okay. And, so the uh, same company doesn't make a 100 amp hour. I was thinking we could get the same thing, but as a 100 amp hour, but they don't make that one as a 100. Okay. I actually have never checked. You can take a look at that. If they did, that would be good. That would add, you know, more capacity. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Jim about his presentation? I thought it was very good. Very well done. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Sure. And and there's a picture of them uh, on the inspection tour. It's on the website. So. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. If you haven't been there. Uh, you should check it. I just happened to go there yesterday and saw that picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, Fantastic. so next thing on the agenda is Ron, it's your presentation. Okay, very good. Um, 
I'm wondering, let me try something here. Yeah, um, I'd uh, can, can you give me permission to record? I'd like to make my own recording of this. Before you go on, one thing we didn't do was roll call and have everybody introduce themselves. I don't oh, remember, do we still do that? Very good, so. yes, we can't go without that. Okay, so I don't recall how Donna did this, but um, Michael John, uh, why don't you unmute yourself and just say who you are in your call sign. Or let me go first while Michael John unmutes himself. I'm Jerry Jahalag, even though it says Donna Fong, KT6CRT. Michael John, can you unmute yourself? Let's see if I can unmute you. Uh, I cannot unmute you. We'll go to Jim. There we go. This is Michael John. Yeah, Michael John, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, Michael John, KF6YRG. And Jim? Yeah, I'm Jim Wright, KJ6UHT. Richard? Uh, Richard White, uh, KG6DRB. Bob? I'm Bob Gill, uh, KG6SGZ. And Jean? Jean, you sound like a chipmunk. There might be something yeah. on your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you sound like a like mini mouse. That's good. Good humor. Uh, thank you, Gene. Uh Steve. Uh Steve Balunic, uh KM6 ZN said. Thank you, Steve. And Dan. Uh yeah, Dan KG6 YZF. Uh can't do it on the tablets. I've been having some issues with Zoom on my desktop, but hopefully this is going through okay. You look and sound great, Dan. Thanks. Perfect. And last Ron. Okay, whoops. Am I, yeah, I'm not my, muted. I'm D Ron WQ6X, uh, currently the club president. And that's it. Go ahead, Ron, with your presentation. All right, now let's see if uh, it says I need to be given permission to record because I'd like to make a separate recording oh, of this. It says recording on mine. Well, it says that you're recording, yes. Oh, okay. um, See, um, what I would like is for this presentation to be uh, without the rest of the meeting on it, so okay. we can put it up 